Today I gave my students their first exercise and it needs to be accomplished within the day. Although the submission is really next week, I want to see their progress so I asked them to submit a progress report uh, during the dismissal of the class, again online. Uh, several days ago before the meeting, I asked my students to bring a material that they can use for this project. Uh, it can be an illustration board, it can be a foam board, a balsa wood, or a cinder board uh, for as long as it can simulate the rigidity of plywood, glass, etc. Um, but they are allowed to use their found materials at home that has the same properties because they're not really allowed to go out because of the pandemic. The title of the exercise is Maintaining the Continuity of Material. And when I say material, I'm referring to the material that I asked them to bring for today's exercise. And then they have two tasks to, to meet. One is to create a free form using their intuition, but again, meeting the title, which is uh, maintaining continuity of material. And the second one is creating a, a model that is has a notion of a building. Again, meeting the objective of maintaining the continuity of material. And they produce interesting results, and uh, which I'm going to share with you later on. Uh, what I like about the presentation of this student is that he's very creative in his presentation. He even uh, used a, uh, a tissue holder so that uh, you can peek through uh, the hole of the tissue holder. No, it's not a tissue holder, it's a tissue cardboard. And then um, I thought that uh, probably later on when we are able to develop his project, we can use these tools and this creative inclination in uh, creatively presenting his project. Uh, but going back to his presentation per se, it's still not meeting the brief when it comes to connectivity and continuity because uh, you can see that the elements and the shapes are are disconnected, they're still disparate, except that it's very interesting because he incorporated uh, the structural elements that I mentioned earlier during my lecture as I mentioned the learning outcomes of the previous term. So uh, I talk about the building systems, etc. So uh, you can you can see that this student is very sensitive and very uh, absor absorptive of uh, the lessons. The submission of the next student is actually interesting in such a way that it was documented properly and uh, you notice there are still separate elements and uh, you, you notice that there are scores on the surfaces and this will allow you to, to bend uh, these are uh, rock-like, flat or leaf-like uh, surfaces, uh, but still it's not a continuous element. But uh, the scoring that he introduced, he will be able to use it the moment he realizes that the moment he uses something that is continuous, uh, that he can manipulate uh, to create walls, floors, etc., uh, the scoring will be really helpful really take away your attention towards the form because it's devoid of colors but uh, when it comes to the project brief um, yeah, and I like it in a way that you know it's uh, a continuous array of strips then probably the idea of continuity is introduced in a conceptual level however um, the strips in itself they are separate elements the second model that uh, she introduced it's already a built element and there's a an idea behind it that is almost continuous, except that uh, it's still not because they are just volumes that are interconnected. Uh, but the, the continuity of the, the material was disrupted because for you to be able to create those cubes, you need to disrupt uh, the surface. While the submission is interesting enough for you to have very pure planar elements stacked together, this is not what we're looking for. It's very clear that these are not uh, a, a one piece a sheet of material. And then um, the second uh, model that uh, the student created, uh, it's already a defined, uh, almost an almost recognizable element in a building, a spiral staircase. And that's not what we're looking for. Many of the students submitted text and, and a, a drawing which is actually okay, but in this case, since I was very clear about my instruction on bringing a cardboard uh, material that is rigid enough that it can simulate wood, um, it was already given uh, and that they're going to make a model, but most of them still provided me drawings and text. Uh, the, the project can be simplified into just creating a model. And I didn't reject the text and the uh, the, the drawings because they can be supplemental information and I want them to use these tools later on when they are 
supplementing their work. Uh, but uh, for this exercise, it wasn't really the case. That's why when I'm looking at the work of uh, this student, she, that she mentioned that uh, she was inspired by a very particular building uh, from a certain city. I was discouraging her from doing so because it's almost saying that she copied the idea. Uh, but that's not really my concern at all. My concern is, is that she limited herself with uh, a letter C. Uh, yes, it is continuous. It was almost there, but it stopped there. But if she worked with a more tangible and 3D material, something that she can touch, something that is uh, uh, malleable, then probably she could have explored more because the moment you are holding that cardboard and she just created a C, of course she won't be satisfied. Uh, she will be exploring, she will be manipulating it further more. Um, they forgot that uh, this exercise is meant for them to be more comfortable with sketch modeling. That's why they didn't do it. Elements that are very recognizable, the, the vertical one that supports the horizontal. And the fact that I said it supports the horizontal, it, the idea is really not connected. Had this student submitted a physical model, she could have gotten the brief perfectly. But she was afraid to use a physical model as a tool, maybe because of the time-consuming aspect of uh, making one. Um, the first uh, sketches actually hit the nail. It's just that the second one, I, I can read that uh, she was having second thoughts about. The second submission, one is a fail and one got it right. The first one, because there are just planar elements that she folded and then she connected or interlock. Uh, but the second one, you can see that the base is connecting all the ones that are vertical, that, that uh, were folded. So uh, you can argue that this is a, a, con a continuous uh, sheet of paper. So uh, good job. The style of the student is probably to document his work in a very pristine and clean manner. Uh, you can see it in his submission. Uh, the notion of a building is literally uh, a structure that has a roof and has walls, etc. But when you look at the notion of a building, they're not really connected because the, the planar elements are just sitting on top of one another. They're not really connecting like this is the, uh, the horizontal and this is the uh, vertical. And then maybe you need to connect it this way so that that way it is, con it is uh, connected. This was a former student, so I'm very familiar with the quality of his work. And you can see with the submission, uh, it was clearly presented, very focused. And, um, but again, it didn't meet the brief. That I did tell them that they can use found materials in their house if they don't have any material. They can recycle them. And if they run out of uh, uh, surfaces, then they can connect different, uh, different materials together just to create continuity. Um, but uh, in this case, it's clearly that uh, he, he is expressing materiality. That's why you, ha you can recognize vertical planar elements that are just one material and some of it are, are just white. I have yet to verify if this is really her work because with the time constraints given, this is really impressive. Uh, for the notion of building, uh, I would think that this was uh, pulled out from the internet, but if if it was done just today, wow, this, is, this presentation is really good. And unfortunately, this is still not the brief because uh, I was just very distracted and very impressed by the presentation skill. As for the first submission, which is uh, the, no, uh, the, the intuition and the free form, it's almost there except that she was limited with the horizontal elements when she could have brought it down to create a wall, to create a floor. I really have to commend the submission of this student because she really took time to document the process of her work uh, down from the concept up to the actual form. And then she even has text accompaniment uh, with it. So it is really impressive. Um, but unfortunately, when you look at the model, the continuity is only on one dimension. Um, she has those curvy uh, profile of the model, but it stops there. Uh, I want them to think three-dimensionally even with architecture. As you can see, the presentation skill of the student is actually superb. She was a former student, so I am very familiar with the quality of her work. But again, the work doesn't really meet the project brief. It, it feels like it's a complete structure and all the elements are disconnected. And uh, only common uh, with this submission is the material that she used. 
um, it's all about the wood it's very impressive good material for architectural modeling and sometimes maybe that's the uh, the idea of continuity that a lot of designers have uh, when they have a common material and and yes it is a continuous but uh, in this pro in this case I want them to push it further I don't want them to uh, limit themselves with the finishes I want them to look at form and how they can uh, truly express their idea. For the first time, we see a guy who finally met the project brief. You see one strip or one sheet that is continuous, it doesn't really break, and uh, I think it can still be further explored later on. Uh, one thing that he can improve is the presentation style because his peers are next level. Looking at the amount of work that my students produce for, for today, it's actually very impressive. And you can already see how they think when it comes to a given design problem. Um, they tend to analyze it, sometimes overanalyze it, when the instruction is very simple. I gave them a material and then I gave them a project brief and what to do with it. They just need to work on the model and it was very specific about creating a, a model for today. I remember saying that uh, they, they are going to use that material. So that material is very physical and therefore I wasn't looking for any sketches, I wasn't looking for any text, but uh, that that's what I was given. And maybe it's one skill that uh, you need to develop as a designer. Sometimes the answer is actually very simple and you don't need to complicate things. Uh, the reason why I trained them this way is because I remember joining competitions in Japan, uh, Nagoya, Osaka, and a lot of their themes are actually very ambiguous and very poetic and it's up to you how to interpret it and they get numerous types of uh, submissions and the ones that meet the theme and the project brief actually gets the prize. I, I sort of want my students to not rely on a specific requirement and, and be more creative with it but at the same time with the trick that the problem is actually just simple. Uh, only one student actually met the project brief and I'm very impressed on how, uh, how he got it the first try. And, uh, and another student actually sort of got it but she was afraid to uh, use the proper tools and the instruction provided for them. But I have to say that I have to commend the students because they are very eager to learn and they are willing to stretch an extra mile just so they can meet the project brief. And they work really hard uh, so that uh, they can produce uh, quality work. And uh, I'm looking forward to this term and I'm, I hope that uh, they are optimistic in, in finishing this subject.